Wondering what happens in YNAB when you transfer money at the bank? Let's walk through money transfers step by step and answer those burning questions. A once in a lifetime trip opportunity pops up out of the blue. I don't have quite enough money set aside for it in my travel category in YNAB, and I'm gonna need to shift some money from my savings account to my checking account before I can even book my tickets, but ain't no way in this universe I'm missing out on this trip, okay? So where do I start? With step one, initiate the transfer at the bank. This might seem obvious to some, but sometimes it's easy to forget that as awesome as YNAB is, the bank is the one that actually has my physical dollars and can move those dollars from one account to the other for me. So let's say I'd like to move $1,000 from my savings account to my checking account before booking my flights and lodging. I'm gonna whip out my banking app and initiate that transfer. And just to keep the numbers simple for this video, let's say before the transfer, I had $5,000 in my checking account and $5,000 in my savings account, $10,000 altogether. After my $1,000 transfer, I have $6,000 in my checking account and $4,000 in my savings. So now it's on to step two. It's time to record this bank transfer in YNAB. YNAB is kind of like my little money diary where I record what my dollars did for me. For spending and earning, entries might look like employer gave me $2,000 or spent $12 on the best funnel cake of my life. Or in the case of transfers, moved $1,000 from savings to checking to book the sickest vacay of the century. I always want to make sure any money movements happening at the bank are also recorded in YNAB. The goal is for my YNAB account balances to match my real life bank account balances. So let's go ahead and hop into YNAB and make my diary log of the transfer I just made at the bank. But wait, before I hop into my accounts tab, I just want you to give this plan here a little look-see real quick. You'll notice there are zero dollars up and ready to assign because I've already assigned all 10,000 of my dollars out to my plan. Some are waiting to pay the mortgage, some are all loaded up to repair a future car breakdown, and not enough of these are ready to book my dream vacation, but we're gonna get to that a little bit later. Now, popping over into my accounts tab, we can see I still have $5,000 in checking and $5,000 in savings. If you have your bank accounts linked in YNAB, the appropriate transfer transactions will import themselves after a while, but since I literally just made this transfer 72 seconds ago, I'm just gonna manually record it for now and any future imported transactions will eventually link up with my manually entered ones. So no need to worry about accounts accumulating duplicate transactions or anything like that. YNAB's too smart for that. Now, let's record my bank transfer by tapping the new transaction button at the bottom of the screen. When it comes to recording transfers, I like to start by selecting which account I transferred the money out of first. I'll tap account and select my savings account since this is where the money was moved from. Next, I'm just gonna work top to bottom. So I'll enter the amount I transferred, $1,000, and tap the pay e-box. Rather than selecting a physical vendor like that dreamy funnel cake truck I ate at last week, or my bank even, I'm gonna select one of these transfer options found right here at the top of the payee dropdown menu. I sent $1,000 from my savings to my checking, so I'm gonna select the transfer to checking option. You'll notice when I selected this option that my ability to select a category is now grayed out. Seems odd at first, but that's because this money didn't really do a job for me that it needs to be categorized to. It just kinda moved. Think of your dollars as having jobs and homes, just like us. Their jobs are the category they're sitting in, what they're gonna do for you, and their houses are where they live, which account they're stored in. If a dollar gets a different job, it can still live in the same house. No need to move, just like you wouldn't move if you got promoted to senior executive manager. Oh, congrats. And if the dollars move to a different house, they don't have to change jobs. They'll keep on doing exactly what they were doing before, just with more square footage or a dreamier backyard. These thousand dollars we transferred weren't given a new job. They just moved house from savings to checking. Therefore, no need to assign them to a category. Now, this is a good time to mention that if I don't record this transfer in YNAB myself and I just choose to wait for my linked bank accounts to import them for me later, YNAB's gonna treat this transaction like any other transaction and ask me to select a category for it. But we know better now, so I'm gonna follow the same process as before. Select the appropriate transfer payee from the drop-down menu, ensure my category box is grayed out, and give it a save. Now, my transfer is recorded. If I head back to my spending plan in YNAB, 
What do you think I should expect to see in Ready to Assign? Will there be $1,000 waiting to be assigned out to the plan since I moved that money from a no touchy savings account to my everyday spend checking account? It's a trick question. Nope, Ready to Assign is still at $0 because no new money came into my bank that needs to be given jobs and none of my dollars were taken away from their jobs when I transferred the money from savings to checking. Those $1,000 are still sitting in the same categories they were before, working their same little nine to five jobs that I gave them before the transfer. They just moved house from savings to checking. Now when I tap the accounts tab, I can see that the transfer did occur. The savings account now has $4,000 while the checking account has $6,000. Matches the bank, we love that. And if I tap into the checking account, I can see that YNAB also noted that transfer of money here as well. When I recorded an outflow of $1,000 from my savings account to my checking account, YNAB automatically generated a second transaction, a $1,000 inflow to my checking account from my savings account. It's kind of like throwing a ball just a thousand dollar ball. When little Sammy Savings throws his thousand dollar ball to little Chucky Checking, the outflow, if you will, little Chucky Checking has to actually catch that ball to receive little Sammy Savings throw, the inflow. Otherwise the ball's just kind of floating around in the universe or rolling into an existential gutter somewhere. Make sense? YNAB is just closing this loop for you. And PS, if your accounts are linked and you don't record these transfers yourself, YNAB will import this receiving transaction for you as well with the exact payee and non-category and account that it needs. So don't sweat that. So now that I've moved money from one account to another at the bank and I've recorded that transfer in YNAB, it's time for step three moving money in my plan. In the same way that moving money between my accounts has no effect on my categories, moving money between my categories has no effect on my accounts. I can shuffle all my dollars in and out of all my different categories all day long, but I'm still gonna have $4,000 in savings and $6,000 in checking at the end of the day, just like before. My travel category currently has $2,000 in it, but I'm gonna need more like 2,500 to book all my flights and lodging, which means I'm gonna need to scrape up some money from somewhere else in my spending plan to get this category up to the 2,500 I need to book my trip. To keep any one of my accounts from taking too much of a hit, I think I'll take 200 from my home emergency fund and move it to travel, 200 from car repairs to travel, and 100 from childcare to travel. 15 seconds, boom. Now I not only have all the dollars I need in my actual checking account to book my travel while still being able to pay my mortgage and buy groceries and what have you, but I also have all 2,500 ready and waiting to book these tickets when I'm ready, which is like now. <laughs> One second. It's really as easy as one, two, three. Transfer at the bank, record your transfer in YNAB, and move any money around in your plan as needed. Now, if you're someone who has loads of different bank accounts, one to save up for your next car, one for income loss, three for future college educations, and you're wondering how all those work in conjunction with YNAB and transferring money, and whoops, did I just accidentally put some of my down payment money into my groceries category? Then tune into my next video where I'll cover this topic in depth. How many bank accounts you truly need as a YNABber and why you might be adding more work than clarity to your financial organization. Super sexy topics, but we love to learn, okay? <laughs> Please let me know if you found this video helpful, what topics you'd like me to break down next, and what part of this video was the light bulb moment you were needing. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one. Since I moved that money from a no touchy savings account to my everyday spending checking account. <laughs> This is a hard line. I want to drink water, but I don't think there's time. It feels really quiet in here. Oh, I totally messed up this whole line. Don't worry about it. Also, I'm already hot. I'm already hot. Oh, whoa. <laughs> no thanks. Please, please let me do that line again. Third time's the charm. It's always the charm. Every time it's the charm.